If you are in southern Manhattan below Canal Street, you should walk north and get out of southern Manhattan. And the uh, police and the fire need all of the room and all of the space possible to try to evacuate the people at the World Trade Center. This is a terrible tragedy. The best way we're going to get through this is if we remain calm and just listen to everyone, not to panic. That we've communicated. We've communicated with the White House. They are doing the best they can to secure the airspace around the city. We've already seen military aircraft, our military aircraft, up in the air. So people should remain calm. They should remain where they are, except if they are in southern Manhattan. If you're below Canal Street, you should walk out of southern Manhattan and walk north, as these people are doing right here. There, there have to be questions on the part of the, the fire department at this point about uh, the structural integrity of that building and, and whether they want to send any people in. Uh, yeah. Because you know, they, they try to respond to these things by sending firefighters up the stairs to fight the fire, but uh, when you're talking about a, an explosion of this magnitude, that amount of jet fuel up there, right. uh, they would have to uh, ask themselves questions about whether they want to send those men in to fight the fire or just let it burn itself out. As soon as you saw the first tower fall, you knew clearly that the second one was in danger. I mean, if not from the impact of the plane at the top, from this, this debris that had, had fallen and, and maybe damaged the structure at the bottom. So if there was any doubt about the danger of being down there, that was gone in, in that flash that moment. And the, the urgency of the situation moved up several levels in a story that you thought had already taken on uh, as, as much of a sense of urgency as anything that you'd, you'd covered. Because now, you just had the sense that the, the clock was ticking on the other tower. There is no subway service in New York City. All subway service throughout the five boroughs has been suspended uh, as a precaution after this terrorist attack at the World Trade Center. Andrew Kurtzman, our political reporter, had, had managed to get himself right down in the, the center of where the city officials had gathered. There's a policeman just screaming at me, get off the street, get off the street, it's not safe, get off the street. And I'm like, just one second, officer, I need to file this report. And finally, I, it took too long, I hung up, I said I'd call him back later. And I walked down the street and I turned to the same cop and I said, do you know where Giuliani is? And he said, yeah, he's two blocks away. I said, he's two blocks away? He said, yeah, he's right there. And Giuliani is covered in, in white dust. He's with Tom Von Essen, the, um, the, the fire commissioner, um, Bernie Carrick, the police commissioner, Tony Coles, a bunch of his aides, and just about maybe two reporters, one cameraman. So we're walking up Church Street as he's trying to kind of collect himself, figure out where they should go next. And suddenly I hear a rumble behind me and I look back and Tower One is coming down. I look at Giuliani who sees it, and this plainclothes cop, this detective, throws his arm around Giuliani and just grabs him and bolts. And suddenly we are all running north up Church Street to avoid this um, mushroom cloud which is chasing us now from the destruction of the World Trade Center. I see an ambulance from St. Vincent Hospital come down. At, at that moment when it passes by, I pan up to the building. And right there, right there in front of the lens, in front of my eyes, the building, you, you just saw a whole floor blow out and then the building just toppled. Holy shit! A big tidal wave of, of dust starts, just shoots up Church Street. You know, and it, it's just sucking people in. You see people running and, and the, the cloud just engulfs them. We sensed after the first tower collapsed that it would just be a matter of time before the second tower collapsed, what would be different. Um, we didn't think, I didn't think it would happen so soon because the second tower, the north tower, <clears throat> the plane hit the north tower higher than it hit the south tower. So um, we thought that the structure, the south tower was the damage was further more weight obviously on the impact zone and therefore it crumbled first. Um, didn't think the North Tower would come down, but by the time it did, we were prepared for it, so to speak, and we were closer to the truck than the first time and were able to almost like, uh, we, the people who were with us the first time, some left, some stayed. The second tower collapsed and those of us who were outside simply just went back into the truck and waited for the debris cloud to hit us again. 
a gentleman was moving past me, and I remember catching this on tape, with a walkie-talkie telling people to move north, move everyone north. I still couldn't grasp that this could be because the other tower was going to fall. Keep moving north! Keep moving north! Keep moving north! from Pittsburgh that another large plane has crashed, a plane going down in western Pennsylvania. Uh, officials at the Somerset County Airport in western Pennsylvania near Pittsburgh say another large plane has crashed there. It was pretty clear when we heard about the Pentagon crash uh, what had happened there, that it was another target of one of these planes. It wasn't so clear with, with the crash in Pennsylvania because we heard that a plane had gone down uh, apparently in a field and it wasn't clear until hours or, or, or days later that there had been this, this struggle on board the plane with the, the passengers and the hijackers fighting for control of the plane. So all we knew initially was that somewhere in Pennsylvania a plane had crashed and we didn't initially know whether it was coincidental or whether in fact it, it was related and it really wasn't clear from the beginning what the destination of that plane was, only that another jet had gone down in a uh, morning of, of tragedy. So this, of course, is primary day in New York City. We have just received word that that uh, election has been canceled or, or at least postponed. So uh, there is uh, no need to uh, go to the polls today. They are going to uh, make some sort of uh, contingency to have that primary election on another day. Giuliani was very impressive. He um, was this kind of barking orders to his aides as to where to go. There was a tremendous confusion about where to relocate City Hall. City Hall was deserted, uh, evacuated. One police plaza was evacuated. There was no place to run the city from. And it wasn't until recently that I looked back and realized just how incredible it was. They didn't even have a car. We walked two miles north in order to find a place to relocate city government. Now we're uh, walking north through these crowds and they have now arrived at their destination of choice, which is a firehouse on 6th Avenue just south of Housen Street. The first thing that Rudy Giuliani did when we got into that firehouse on 6th Avenue was he got on the phone with New York One and he spoke to New Yorkers. It was the first phone call he made, I think, after calling the White House. I was told that we were going to have an interview with Rudy Giuliani, that he'd agreed to, to talk to us. Uh, not so much an interview as that he had something to say and, and thought that New York One was an obvious way to reach the people that, that he needed to. So we knew that this phone call was coming. I had a thousand questions for Rudy Giuliani, but when he phoned, and when he got on the line, it was very clear that, that he had things to say that took precedence over any, any questions I might have. So in a lot of ways, uh, he took control of that interview. Mayor Giuliani, it's Pat Kern, and I'm with Sharon Diesenhouse here. I wonder if you could uh, give us an update of, of uh, the emergency operations well, right the now. Well, first, the first thing I'd like to do is take this opportunity to tell everyone to remain calm and uh, to the extent that they can to evacuate lower Manhattan walk north 
if you're in lower Manhattan, walk north and get above Canal Street. Yeah. Things will be a lot safer. We have as many police personnel and fire personnel as we can spare down there.